The Google Pixel Fold has finally entered an unchallenged market for foldables in the United States, which has been dominated by the Samsung Galaxy Fold and Galaxy Flip devices. If Bing from Microsoft jumps into the scene with AI, which has forced Google to catch up and innovate, then having Google as another player in the foldable market will hopefully create a sorely needed competition in the States. Is the Google Pixel Fold enough to generate that fire under Samsung's butt to lead to better devices, or is this only a first step? There's still time to answer that question, but I had a chance to get a hands on the Google Pixel Fold at Google I.O., which Google did provide the travel and accommodations for, but did not sponsor or have any editorial control of this video. Here's my first impressions review of the Google Pixel Fold, some exclusive photo and video samples, and interesting things I found in the software after telling you about our sponsor, Sidekick. Sidekick is an innovative browser designed to keep you more productive and efficient in whatever you do. You can add many supported apps into the sidebar or just a few. It has built in distraction blockers like a focus mode timer. And and their insanely powerful workspaces, which allow you to have separate environments with their independent sessions, cookies, apps, and more. And Sidekick is super powerful because AI powers it. If you wanna learn more about Sidekick and to help support the channel, go ahead and click the link down below in the description. The first thing that stands out about the Google Pixel Fold is its aspect ratio and thinness. On the external display, you'll find a 1550 nit peak brightness, 5.8 inch screen with a wider aspect ratio than what you'd find on a Samsung Galaxy Fold. This makes it feel more like a typical smartphone than the Galaxy Galaxy Fold, which is very narrow, and I actually prefer this wider form factor. The internal display opens up to a 1450 nit peak brightness 7.6 inch display with a 6 by 5 aspect ratio. The form factor and aspect ratio feels nice in the hand. Google told me they modeled the size based on what a moleskin notebook would feel like, and I think they pulled it off. What didn't live up to the spec numbers was its brightness. I'm unsure when it utilizes its peak brightness, but I found it notably dimmer than the iPhone 14 Pro model that I had with me, and that proved to be problematic in brighter environments like where we are filming. But what is extremely impressive is how thin it is. At only 12 millimeters thin, not including the camera bar, the Google Pixel Fold is the thinnest foldable smartphone in all the regions it's sold in, making it feel less like a brick than other foldables. There are, however, some trade-offs for this thinness. Google developed a custom hinge that can withstand 200,000 folds and can confidently hold its position at any angle between open and close. That means you have a built-in tripod or stand for the camera or watching content. One trade-off for this is how it only folds partially flat, at least easily. Google did tell us that we could give it some extra force to lay fully flat, but that's not something that you would intuitively discover, nor does it feel natural to do so. The Google Pixel Fold does close all the way without a gap between the two sides and closes with a confident clunk. And while every foldable does have a visible crease, most have managed to reduce its appearance enough that you mostly don't see it in regular use when you're looking at it directly. You do notice a more prominent crease with the Google Pixel Fold than with most other modern foldables. Its prominence reminds me of what the first Samsung Galaxy Fold looked like. The most significant benefit of Google's custom engineered hinge is the ability to make the Google Pixel Fold as thin as possible, but here is the big trade-off. The thickest parts of the hinges were moved to the very top and bottom of the phone. Most other foldables have it throughout the hinge, which results in a thicker device. The trade-off for this is a thicker bezel on the top and bottom of the device, which I know a number of you do not prefer, but it also allows for hiding the inner camera within that bezel compared to a hole punch design. Would you rather have a thinner device overall or thinner bezels? You see, creating products is very hard and involves a lot of compromises and trade-offs, so let me know your thoughts in the comments. Despite having a thin form factor, Google managed to fit the largest battery of any foldable coming in at a max 4,821 milliamps with a max charging speed of 30 watts. How this compares to other foldables, we'll have to see. The efficiency of Google's Tensor G2 processor will likely have the most significant impact on battery life compared to other foldables. If it doesn't turn out so well, it has wireless charging so you can keep it topped out throughout the day, but let's hope that the battery life is actually actually great. A fingerprint reader is embedded in the power button along the side. This is great if you're using the Pixel Fold in your right hand, but it is less comfortable to hit if you use your phone in your left hand, like me. Thankfully, it also supports face unlock, which may be the most convenient option. The Google Pixel Fold also has 12 gigabytes of RAM, has an IPX8 rating, so it has protection against water, but not dust or sand, and comes in two colors, Obsidian and the Google Store exclusive porcelain color. That's my favorite colorway because it has a clean look and the gold accents and frame make it look relatively high-end. Also, both colors have a matte finish back. 
finally. Hopefully that means we'll get a matte finish on the Pixel 8 series later on this year. Let's hope that they figure that out. Overall, the Google Pixel Fold looks surprisingly refined and I like the look of it a lot, but I would love to hear what you think of its design in the comments. Subpar cameras and foldables have become an unfortunate combination in all foldables it seems. That's why the Google Pixel Fold excites me. They claim to have the world's best camera system on a foldable and we'll be able to see some samples from it. Real quick, some specs. The Google Pixel Fold has three cameras on the back, a 48 megapixel main camera, a 10.8 megapixel 121.1 degree field of view ultra wide camera, and a 10.8 megapixel 5X telephoto lens. It also has an 8 megapixel f2.0 84 degree field of view internal front selfie camera. Here are some camera samples for the Google Pixel Fold. The internal front facing camera allows you to capture photos or video at a 1x zoom and a 1.4x zoom. That's similar to what you would see on any other Pixel phone. I did notice that the 1.4x looks softer than the 1x zoom. One of the greatest things about the Google Pixel Fold is the ability to use the external display to frame your shot while taking a selfie with the primary sensors instead of the inner camera. That means you get the best image quality for your selfies. You have access to the ultra wide, which isn't as clean and deep detailed as the main camera, which has the best image quality. You can even punch into that primary sensor to get a 2x zoom. And if you want, you can even zoom in 5x. One thing that I did notice is that the telephoto still delays a bit before kicking in, which has persisted on Google's telephoto lenses since the Pixel 6 Pro. You can use the internal camera for video, but I would avoid using the inner camera because it's easy to use the main cameras instead. It just looks better. I did find one quirk while testing out the camera and it appears that you cannot shoot in 4K video when you have the Pixel Fold open. You can only film in 4K when you have it closed. Is that a processor, software, or sensor limitation? I, I don't know, but I wanted to point that out since I didn't see that mentioned anywhere else. Overall, Google does add its excellent Google Pixel processing to the photos taken on the Google Pixel Fold, and images look great if not better than the competition. Much of that comes down to how dialed in their post-processing is and how they can achieve a higher quality image even with fairly old sensors like what we've seen in previous Pixel A series devices. Even this portrait mode shot looks pretty decent. But what do you think of these camera samples? I'm stoked to have a 5X tele on a foldable. You can also put the Pixel Fold down in a tripod-like position to frame your shot and take a picture of yourself, but this uses the weakest sensor found on the inside. This differs from options like the Oppo Find N2 Flip, which provides a display to help you frame yourself while using the primary sensors. Google also leans heavily on using voice commands to control your phone when you ask it to take a picture. If you're like me, you may not be the type that prefers speaking aloud commands, especially around others. I would love it if Google added a physical gesture that you can make like holding up your palm to take a picture. Nonetheless, it's great to see how form factors like this can be used. The software is one of the most exciting parts of the Google Pixel Fold. Its impacts are far more significant than the Pixel Fold, but on the entire Android ecosystem and its tablets. Beyond ensuring that apps aren't flipping around dizzily like what you find on other foldables, apps open up in an orientation that you expect, and it stays that way. Swiping down to reveal the drop-down shade now includes a split of your settings on one side and notifications on the other. Side-by-side -side multitasking is quite nice on the big screen, and resizing is intuitive and easy. You can even grab an image from the Photos app on one side of the display and drop it into email, and it will attach the photo. There's also a new slide up dock with recent apps and an app drawer that you can quickly access. It does take a little bit to get used to, especially if you're already using the gesture navigation option. Instead of swiping up, which simply takes you to the home page or the app overview, you swipe up and hold to reveal this quick access dock. These features found on the Google Pixel Fold are exciting because they will help encourage developer support and optimization for tablets, which is sorely needed. That means we may see these features appearing on significantly more Android tablets soon. It's already on the Google Pixel tablet. Tablet. The question will be whether or not there'll be significant enough adoption to make Android tablets a significant player, or if iPads will continue to be the default option. Beyond the features that we'll likely see on other tablets, there's a clever feature that allows you to live translate with someone who speaks another language, which the crowd at Google I.O. loved, and I imagine it's probably because it's creative, obvious, and just neat. This feature has yet to be released, so I didn't get to test it out, but I'm looking forward to trying it out. On top of that, you have all these great Pixel features like clear calling, call screening, re recording, Google Photos, and more, and this runs very fast and smoothly on the Google Tensor G2 chip. So I'm very excited to try out the Google Pixel Fold as my primary device and see what I really think of it. It. 
at $1,800, it is pricey, but it does come with a Pixel Watch to help offset if you're planning to get one or you could sell the Pixel Watch. The promo for that also allows for a free LTE version of the Pixel Watch at no price difference. However, there are rumors of a Pixel Watch 2 coming later on this year, so plan what you will do with it accordingly. Now, are you planning on getting the Google Pixel Fold? Would you be interested in trying out this first generation product or are you planning to wait for a later generation? What do you like and not like about it? Let me know in the comments. And of course, if you plan to buy the Google Pixel Fold, please use the links in the description as they help support the channel. And thanks so much to Sidekick for sponsoring a portion of this video. Go to meetsidekick.com and try it out. It's absolutely free. Thanks for watching. This is Tech Today. Until next time.